Good evening, everyone. Jumped on a little late today. It was a very busy day seeing patients and finishing up my uh, reverse hypertension naturally summit masterclass. So I have one more class to do next week with them. It's been amazing. And it made me think I need to jump on here and share some really cool research that I came across recently. Speaking about a very particular part of certain plant foods, of course, that will improve your blood pressure. So <clears throat> first of all, let's get to the study. There is a meta-analysis of what we call random controlled trials. So these are the most important kind of the way you want to be studying is like you take a control group and you take a intervention group and you compare the difference, right? In a very simplistic manner. But what they did is they supplemented with the, what we call, I was considered a provitamin is a carotenoid, right? It's a precursor to things like uh, vitamin A and different things. And they took this and they looked at lycopene and some others and it reduced systolic and diastolic blood pressure, um, which is the top and bottom never. <clears throat> and what was studied was um, there were over a thousand adults between ages of 23 and 68 that had no known conditions of cardiovascular disease or um, blood pressure. So anyway, there were 19 total uh, random control trials in this meta-analysis. They look at a bunch of different, um, different studies and they compile them. And the results were that <clears throat> supplementation with carotenoids um, reduced your blood pressure on top by 2.5 points, right, or milli, uh, millimeters per mercury, and then the diastolic by 1.6. And why is this important? Because even though these are small numbers, it has enormous effects on your risk of heart disease, brain health, your kidney health, so many things. You know, they don't call it the silent killer for anything. Hypertension is something you don't want to mess with, and it's really important you do everything we can to make sure that it's staying under control. So basically, what they found is when you look at the um, dose response analysis, it took about it took about 15 to 20 milligrams of supplemental carotenoids to see some improvement. And so by doing that, there's certain foods here that I want to speak to you about. How can you get that enough, excuse me, food? I have a list here. One second. I had my list. Where did it go? Sorry, I have multiple screens going on here. So some things that you're going to be wanting to pay attention to are like one sweet potato would be enough to get that many um, million milligrams of carotenoids. But I want to speak to you before we dive into um, the particular foods, I want to see, um, I want to explain what carotenoids are specifically. So they themselves are not vitamins, right? But they can be considered provitamins. And so what that means is they can be converted into vitamins in the body, specifically certain carotenoids like beta carotene that can be converted, can be converted into vitamin A, also known as retinol. Um, that's a really important for maintaining like healthy vision, skin, immune function, different things. And then that conversion can um, really be so important. Um, so I think there was, oh, I can't remember the exact study, but they did some supplementation with kiddos. Before I speak, let me let me do a little bit deeper. But anyway, carotenoids are, there's they're actually what gives amazing color to plants, right? So there are more than 600 pigments that are found in plants, algae, and certain bacteria. And they're responsible for the red, the orange, and yellow colors of many fruits and vegetables, and some green, which are masked by the chlorophyll. Um, but mostly the primary carotenoids are known for their vitamin A activity. And let me pull up, more importantly, how it helps blood pressure. So when you think about uh, these particular carotenoids, they're very high in antioxidant effects, right? So that releases, that helps neutralize um, free radicals that can occur, <clears throat> reducing your oxidative stress, which is really important and can be a uh, worse in the progression of hypertension when you have a lot of oxidative stress. Oxidative stress can damage the very delicate endothelial cells inside the blood vessels, um, which release nitric oxide. So if you have damage to those cells, you can get a decreased risk of nitric oxide, which decreases the ability of the blood vessels to dilate. Um, in addition, there's anti-inflammatory properties, right, which are a really important factor in so many chronic diseases. 
um, including hypertension. So when you have reduced inflammation overall, you're going to have reduced blood pressure. And of course, if you have eating these amazing foods, you're going to see some improvement in the endothelial function, more nitric oxide, fantastic. And you also see some studies show that um, suggest that specific carotenoids like lycopene have direct effects on the blood pressure, like the studies I was mentioning. And um, what they think may be happening, it's influencing the function of certain hormones um, and enzymes, such as um, the uh, angiotensin converting enzyme, which may sound familiar like ACE inhibitors, blood pressure medications. Um, also, carotenoids can influence lipid metabolism, reducing LDL, your bad cholesterol, increasing your good cholesterol. So eat more there even for that. And um, yeah, so let me jump down here to the foods. Carrots. Uh, they're the richest source of beta carotene. You get about 100 grams of raw carrots, about one large carrot, basically. You get about 8 to 10 milligrams of beta carotene. Um, so sweet. You can eat two large carrots, so get you to that 15 to 20 milligrams of where we're looking to get carotenoids. Sweet potato, one medium-sized sweet potato contains around 15 to 22 milligrams of beta carotene. Spinach is also rich in different types. One cup of cooked spinach is be enough. One cup of cooked kale, butternut squash. You could do one cup of butternut squash. That gets you about two-thirds of the way there. Uh, pumpkin, which is similar to butternut squash. Again, it's a little bit lower. You can do one cup of cooked pumpkin and get five to 10 milligrams. Tomatoes, you're gonna eat a lot of potato tomatoes, but you could do, uh, so like one medium raw tomato gets you about three to four milligrams. And, but if you did like um, tomato paste or sauce, you probably get higher concentrations. Watermelon has lycopene. <laughs> I love watermelon. It's like so delicious. Uh, one cup of diced watermelon gets you about six to seven. Uh, papaya, yum. Uh, also, red bell pepper is also a wonderful source of vitamin C. So there you go, guys. Go eat some carotenoids. It also gives you a beautiful glow to your skin. Um, but yeah, so check it out. I would love to hear how you're incorporating healthy plant foods to improve your blood pressure, blood sugars, whatnot. Again, I'm always welcome here. Uh, I'm, you're always welcome here. So please subscribe and hit the, the like button and share this with someone if you think that they would benefit from hearing this about eating certain beta you know, carotenoid rich foods. Again, those oranges, reds, beautiful colors um, are going to be the ones that you want to aim for. And so again, I always want to say thank you for being here. I'm sending you love, joy, peace and abundance and healing because we all need more of that in our day. And um, yeah, so I appreciate all of you. I'm sorry I'm around here so late, but I'll be back tomorrow. Who knows? Maybe I'll be inspired by something else. All right. Have a good day.